Hi YouTube, um, I am Courageous Creator and with me, I'm Kim Dorian. We both have our individual channels and we're also married to each other. And today we're going to kick off a relationship <laughs> series in honor of Valentine's Day. And yeah, this is also our first episode of our podcast called Our Thoughts. So we hope you guys enjoy it and more to come. Yeah. Today is, since it's the first episode, we wanted to sort of cover the foundational um, tools that we thought um, are really useful for anyone who's in a relationship or who's thinking of going in a serious relationship. So today we're going to talk about one of my favorite books called The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman. Yeah, so the, the book was actually recommended to me by Ingrid. Um, she's one of the YouTubers. And she basically um, had a channel back in the day, Miss Glamorazzi, um, in 2011-ish time frame. And um, that was the time frame when I was trying to learn more about myself. Um, and I'm just, I was just trying to learn how to communicate a little bit better and I went ahead and took the took the quiz and I read the book and it has been life changing. Um, so we'll walk you through some of the things that we've learned um, and we're not going to go into depth, but we're still going to give you just enough so you know, you understand the concepts that are covered by Gary Chapman. Do you want to share some of your thoughts? So yeah, so this is a great book. Um, Charmy told me to take this quiz. It was a love language quiz. Um, it's a pretty short quiz. I think it's like five, 10 minutes, yeah. some questions you answer, and it basically tells you what's your love language. Um, and there's five different categories of love language. So um, I thought it was pretty interesting. We kind of took the, the quiz, I think three times, right? Over yeah, every years, other year. Every year, I think every, every other, other year. year we've taken and I think it's, it's been great, right? Like, we've progressed. I've progressed a lot. Yeah, so we saw how our love language has changed um, over the years. Over the years. So we kind of took it every year or every other year to see, you know, what was going on. Um, but, yeah, it's a really good tool for when you're in relationships um, to just know yourself and also know your partner um, and what they like and what they don't like in terms of how they accept love and how they show love. Um, that kind of thing. So, yeah. Yeah, so, and and I just want to, before we get into the concepts, like um, Mr. Camdorian said, there are five different love languages. But before we get into that, I just want to put it out there in the world. It is so important to know yourself first before you get to know your partner. Because if you don't know yourself um, and if you don't know how to communicate your own needs, um, the other person's just not gonna know how to really have that relationship with you because they will keep trying and then because you don't know what you want and there's no sense of self-awareness this tool might not exactly work with the intent and intention that it's supposed to overall so I wanted to just preface that so here we go there are five love languages number one is words of affirmation um, so words of affirmation are basically verbal expressions of care and effort. So for example, I would like, thank you for doing dishes. Um, if Neil did, if Mr. Camdorian did dishes, I'd be like, thank you for doing the dishes, or you look so handsome today, um, etc. And when the words of affirmation are not working is when you uh, unconsciously insult your partner in public or just in general. Um, if your partner's love language, the primary love language is word of affirmation, um, it's really off-putting if you say something incorrectly to them because words matter to them so much. Want to do the second one? Uh, yeah. So also in words of affirmation, it's it's more I guess just like you know supporting your partner in terms of always you know affirming what they're doing is good um, or what they're doing isn't good verbally so you know always describing things to them um, like you know you did a great job today with something or you know 
you know the dinner you made today was really excellent or you know it's just expressing your love through words yeah. and compliments compliments uh, and gratitude do you think words of people whose language primary language is words of affirmation they constantly need validation that's the word I was looking for <laughs> validation um, and also just a reminder you mm -hmm. know like a verbal reminder that what they're doing is appreciated um, that you like what they're doing and that you're grateful for them and everything they do and it's just verbally ex expressing that yeah you want to do the second one the second one is gifts so <laughs> you know tangible or intangible gifts you know jewelry or you know a video game or just an actual object um, or even an activity that's a gift like mr. Camdorian's birthday was yesterday and um, we had lunch mm -hmm. so I, I brought him lunch and I also watched his favorite show with him um, so those are intangible intang presents like it's like a kind of mixed with quality of time also which we will talk about later um, yeah so like you know events like Valentine's Day or Christmas or um, what are the, what are the birthdays you birthdays, know where you yeah. where you expect to get a gift mm -hmm. if somebody's love language is gifts then they really want you to know what they want um, and do not ever forget a gift when you know they're expecting to get one yeah um, like I want flowers every Valentine's Day so yeah. Mr. Camdorian has been getting me flowers every year without forgetting yeah it, it also kind of I guess shows that you listen to your partner mm -hmm. um, when they say like oh I want this or I want that and you know you, you know you're 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 listening to what they want and then you're taking action to buy it for them um, or surprise yeah. them yeah um, I think gifts is something that like for us gifts is not that much of our love language it's um, last <laughs> it's actually last yeah. but I think in relationships when they first start gifts are probably a little bit higher in the in the rating just because you know like I said it shows that you're listening to that person and when they say they want something you're surprising them so like in the beginning of a relationship right gifts kind of have more impact yeah and also like you're just like in this like stage of like newness and you know showering each other with lots of love and presents it's just like one type of a love language this just comes naturally when you're brand new in a relationship um, they what they call it the honeymoon phase where you know um, gifts have more importance um, versus as you progress in your relationship or in your marriage um, I don't know about about everyone else but the way we feel is like we're blessed that we have everything and we're very communicative of what we need and what our wants are um, and the sense of surprise just goes away uh, with like the presence so we basically just spend a lot of time together and do a lot of activities together versus focusing on the materialistic things that we give each other. Um, of course, when there's a bigger purchase ticket item that we need to buy for each other, we, we obviously have a conversation, but that's that's another topic to talk about. Uh, let's do number three. Or do you want to cover anything about gifts? I think just the last thing I'll say for gifts is oftentimes what can also happen is you know, you, you try to get gifts for your partner, but then they might not have really wanted that or they might not like it because yeah. they just didn't like the, the gift or the type of the gift, right? So yeah. it's kind of like a risk, um, you know, to just bank on gifts as, you know, being your love language, I think. But some people it works, I guess. I mean, I, I think we can relate to it because it's our last language. Yeah. Um, but for people who, who love gifts, you know, kudos to you. And um, it's all about what your partners um, appreciate and like each other. So we can't say, you know, bad or good. It's just a love language. It's, and we got to accept all sorts of people in this world. So without any further ado, number three is act of service. Um, An act of service is very important um, because important in general, but to us, it's slightly important doing something helpful or kind for your partner. Uh, for example, I go to bed very early. I'm a early bird and Mr. Cam Dorian's the night owl. So um, oftentimes I wake up to a very gross kitchen 
because I went to bed early and Mr. Kamdar, Kamdorian was just like up and doing things. So one of the things that he does for me is he makes sure that the kitchen is clean so I can have a productive morning routine. And that is so amazing to me and I'm so appreciative of the fact that he knows that in order for me to have a productive morning routine, I need to have a house clean and the kitchen clean. Um, the other thing that I've noticed about you is when Mr. Camdorian does laundry, so when I fold the laundry and put it away, well, I never put it away, but I can fold it for him, I think he appreciates it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's basically doing, it's, you know, when you're, and this, I guess, kind of applies more to when you're living with your partner. Um, you know, you guys are living in the same house and you have to function in the same house to, you know, feed yourselves, obviously, you know, clean up after yourselves. And when you, if, if this is an important love language for you, then you appreciate when your partner, you know, does these things in terms of like, you know, tidying up or doing dishes or cooking or just actual like services that, you know, are required when you're living in a house, right? Whether it's by yourself or with a partner, um, you know, and both of us like, you know, we're just very, I guess, we just like, we're just neat freaks, I guess. And we like things to be clean all the time. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think uh, acts of service is probably like number two, I think. It's yeah. Number one or two. Yeah, for, for me, me, it's it kind number of, two. It kind of bounces back and forth. Yeah, mine is number um, two. Um, and then, you know, so if, if, if somebody's love language is acts of service, and um you know you're somebody who doesn't like to tidy up or you know do chores um then that would obviously negatively impact your partner because that's something that they expect or they they like um it's also more about being seen and being heard right like after active services when your love language so for example if my love language was active service and mr cam dorian's is not um and if he doesn't like if he keeps showering with me, with me, with presents to me and not do anything around the house, then I would just not feel supported. I would feel really, really overburdened. Um, so that's what you're trying to say, yeah. right? Like yeah, like the presents wouldn't matter, right? Because her love language in this example is really acts of service. Yeah. So that's why it's key to figure out what, it's key to take this quiz and figure out what your love languages are and then obviously share it with each other um, and then it can make uh, it can make your life a lot easier. Yeah, and anytime you don't cater to each other's love languages, it's it's damaging to your relationship, and it's also like you get into this vicious cycle of resentment that it's really hard to come out of. So it's really important to sort of sit down and have a check in with each other to really really understand what each other wants, right? Like sometimes there are times, like for example. On Sundays, we have a conversation about how upcoming week is like. So, for example, Mr. Camdorian told me how he's going through something at work. So then I know that I feed, like, any any related to, like, meals or something, I help him and I make his life easier. And same thing for me. Like, if I'm going through a really hard time at work or I have a lot of meetings and presentations, Mr. Camdorian will surprise me with, like, water because I don't drink enough water or, like, tea or food between my meetings so it's like it's like doing those things for each other and it's really nice and you feel loved and supported and who doesn't want that <laughs> um all right so, so the next one would you like ready to, to move oh, on yes okay would you like to yeah so quality time number four. um yeah number four is quality time and it's very pretty self-explanatory it's just you know doing things together that you enjoy really just spending time together you know not staring at phones or even even like watching a movie isn't really quality time because you guys are just both you know looking at the tv you're not engaging with each other yeah. um so yeah quality time is really like going on walks going on dates um doing you know hobbies together like we both love pens and writing mm -hmm. so you know we'll sit in our office together and just do our things writing and you know we'll just like chit chat and that's kind of like quality time yeah. and we show each other like look at look what i wrote or look at this ink or look at this pen you know it's like a back and forth um yeah, and, and when does quality time not work well? Um, like uh, Neil just mentioned, when, so for example, when I am reading a book or listening to an audiobook, and if Neil comes and tries to like engage with me, I am completely dis disengaged with him. And he sometimes feels really annoyed that, oh my God, like I'm trying to tell you something, we need to talk about this, and you're just like listening to your book. 
So that's when, um, you know, it's not working. So, but it's not a quality, we weren't qu spending quality time together, but if we were in an engaged quality time session, and if I was listening to a book and not listening to him, that would not make him feel supported at all. It would make him feel disengaged. It would make him feel basically just like annoyed, right? Like I'm trying to spend time with you and you're try and you're just, you're just not doing it. So quality time is my number one love language. And I think yours keeps flipping back and forth from active service and quality time. Um, and physical touch, which physical is the next touch. one. Yeah, and physical touch. Um, mine is definitely like quality time and acts of service as right next to each other. And then it's words of affirmation and physical touch are like basically equal. And then the last is gift. So with that, um, so we've talked about the pitfalls of the quality time. Now we can move on to the last one, which is the physical touch. <laughs> yeah, physical touch is, you know, obviously holding hands, hugging, um, you know, showing your love through physical touch. Right. So kissing, you know, PDA, um, you know, putting your arm around each other or even like, you know, head massages or like, you know, rubbing each other's feet. Um, it's really just touch. Right. It's just touching each other. There's a lot of research and science behind the fact that when, you know, when somebody touches you, chemicals get released in your brain. Right. Like I think it's endor endorphins, endorphins. Mm -hmm. um, like when you hug someone, you know, endorphins get released. And those are like, you know, the happy, the happy feeling um, chemicals in, yeah. your, in your brain. So, you know, that's, I think physical touch is pretty high on my list. It might be number two, um, just because, you know, especially with uh, COVID, everyone's working from home. So we love it because, you know, <gasps> we can just like go, you know, walk to each other's offices and give each other a hug real quick or, you know, a kiss real quick or just like a high five or just like a shoulder rub, you know? So yeah, it makes it a... Uh, you know, those happy chemicals are going and released yeah, especially, all, throughout, all throughout the day. Yeah, um, especially when we're going through a stressful day. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and Neil's really good with um, identifying when, like, if I'm going through some, like, crazy times or if he's going through some crazy times, like, he, he's really good at asking for what he, what he needs. Um, so why are we telling you about love languages? Um, I think the love languages was the foundational um, information or just the tool that we learned in our relationship because what was happening, one example that I want to give is, for example, birthdays. Like, there is a different idea of how I want to celebrate my birthdays and how you want to celebrate your birthdays. I like all my close friends and family being all in the same room, just having time of life. You know, that's my idea of birthdays. But with you... I'm not big on birthdays. And uh, <laughs> I like to just relax and be, do low-key things. Sometimes just even be by myself. Um, I'm, you know, I don't mind. I guess I'm an introvert, so I don't, you know, I'm not always into talking to people or socializing as much. So, yeah, and, you know, I just like doing things that I enjoy sometimes by myself or even with, with Courageous Creator over here. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and, and I think initially when, I mean, I think up until like a couple of years ago, um, I, I threw uh, Mr. Cam Dorian a surprise 30th birthday party. And he walks in and, you know, we were all excited more than he was. So one of his friends, um, you know, was like convinced that I told him and he, he d like he basically knew that, you know, we were going to his birthday. He actually didn't know. But then I realized that he was just so shocked to see so many people in one room. Like, it was overwhelming for him. Yeah, I was shocked. And <laughs> that night, I knew he was overwhelmed. So that was my lesson learned. And after that, I've been always very mindful of how he wants to celebrate birthday. So that's another thing, right? We readjusted. We had a conversation. We retook our test. And we realized that actually I was giving him birthday parties that I wanted and he was giving me birthday parties that he wanted. So both of us were sort of like disappointed because I would get birthdays just with him and I'm like, I want a big gala. And he's like, well, I don't want 50 people at my birthday party. So I think we've finally adjusted. Um, and last year was the first year where we were just very content. And the year before that too. We were just very content with our birthday 
And that's just an example. We can give you like many examples on how we've learned. But in my opinion, communication is number one key to any healthy relationship. And growing up, not knowing what healthy communication looks like, I rely, we collectively rely a lot on books and people and mentors and coaches that we have had the pleasure to meet and given us a lot of um, advice. I can't stress this enough, but I have to tell you this one more time. But you have to know yourself first in order for you to be able to communicate effectively what your needs and wants are to your partner. You you have to know yourself, and um, know yourself and love yourself. Know yourself and love yourself. Yeah. Then you can love others. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Um, so we basically came up with this five reasonings on why you need to take. Um, the love language test and just get into love languages and get comfortable with speaking the lingo and vocab um, Which I think I've covered one, but do you want to go first and then we'll do alternating? Sure um, So I mean we touched on some of it already, but it's it's really just you know It really helps you and your partner feel appreciative mm -hmm. of each other mm -hmm. um, You know relationships are work, right? They're not easy at times sometimes they are easy but for the most part it's just, you have to put in the work right mm -hmm. and both partners have to put in the work um, to, to get to know each other to understand each other to understand what each other's love languages are so mm -hmm. you can you know fulfill that for each other so number one is that it gives you power of communication and explains and understand what each other's emotional needs are because that's really important yeah so it starts with communication because yeah. if you don't communicating what you like and what you want mm -hmm. then your partner is never going to know right yeah. and they're always going to e either miss and do the wrong things or just not be able to connect with you the way that you want to be connected with yeah and then the second one is feels appreciated mm -hmm. like i and definitely respect and yeah, yeah. And then number three is respect. It cultivates respect with each other because you're constantly being mindful of each other and listening. And um, listening is also another skill that you need to cultivate if you don't know. Not listening to respond, but listening to just understand. Seek to understand what each other is saying. Um, and it also shows that you care, right? That yeah. you're taking the time to learn about your partner, understand you know what makes them tick and what irritates them because mm -hmm. um, you know at the end of the day you can you're not gonna really be happy in your relationship if you don't understand your partner's needs and wants and also they have to understand your needs and wants right it's it's like a balancing act of, of two people um, to make a relationship work yeah and then also I think in my opinion, the love language is also sort of makes you aware of the stories that you tell yourself in your head. Like, for example, the birthday example that we just gave you, right? It's a story that we were telling each other that this is what my partner needs versus um, the other one needs. But in reality, the story that we were telling ourselves is what we actually need. Um, and we were not able to communicate that to each other, right? And also, um, so it's really important when you sort of learn um, the love language, you also learn how to not impose um, your own agenda onto your partners. Mm -hmm. Not agenda, but I, can, I can't come with a better word. What's the better word? I, I guess it's just imposing what you want and what you like, like. onto mm -hmm. your partner because they might not like the same things, right? They yeah. might not want the same things. Yeah. And you have to communicate with each other what those things are. Otherwise, it's always a guessing game and then expectations are not met um, or expectations are not known for even there's no chance to even meet them right yeah yeah expectations are so like complicated and subjective too but yeah you're right you're absolutely yeah. right and then the last one is um, you just feel loved <laughs> and you don't you want to feel loved with about from your partner you want to feel the love and protection um, protection from external factors too um, because once your partner knows you so well, um, no one can shake your foundational strength and base, right? Like you are who you are and then we're very, very strong in our relationship and nothing shakes us. Nothing shakes our trust in each other and also um, doesn't make us second guess that, oh my God, maybe he or she doesn't want this or maybe he or she does want, want that because we are constantly in communication on a weekly basis on what our needs and wants are. 
So if you haven't taken the quiz, um, we'll link it down below. It's free of charge. Um, you get an email back with like a detailed understanding of what, what your profile looks like. Um, but just so kind of round it up, um, we'll just tell, tell them our love languages. So my love language basically is quality time and acts of service. They're like 30, 27%. So they're very much on top. And then the second level is words of affirmation and physical touch and gifts is, is last. For me, um, acts of service and physical touch are number one. So probably like 30% each. And, yeah. Um, and then comes quality time um, as the third, uh, third piece. And then words of affirmation and the last is gifts. Yeah. Mr. Kandorian's very much is so sure of himself he almost doesn't need words of affirmation <laughs> um because he's just he's just so confident and sure about himself that he just he just does him <laughs> all the time <laughs> you gotta love yourself and know yourself you know yeah and and he obviously you know um teaches me all of these little things because loving myself was not so easy because growing up we were always in act of giving um so 2020 and 2021 actually were the first years where I put myself first and built boundaries around our relationship and, and me particularly. And we got, well, not we, he's always good at saying no, but I got in particularly saying no. I'm still learning how to say no, but it's a lifelong process for um, people who are self um, people pleasers. But with that, I think we just want to say thank you for giving us time Check, check out, check this out the book. book. It's a new, number one New York Times bestseller by Gary Chapman. It's a pretty short book, probably an easy read. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and um, yeah. Yeah, and look forward to our next episode. We're going to do our next episode on nonviolent communication, which is also a fun book. And uh, we can't wait to talk to you about some of the tips and tricks that we learned from um, our therapist, actually, my therapist. Um, and we're very excited. Hope you guys find this content really useful. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and comment down below if you read the book or if you intend to or if you have any future questions about relationships. Talk to you soon. See you in the next one. Bye.